the Arizona Democratic Party is censoring Senator Kirsten Sinema after she voted against changing the filibuster, defeating efforts to pass new voting rights legislation. Two NBC News sources say the Saturday vote was unanimous. The party vice chair says it's, quote, unlikely, if not entirely impossible, that the party would support cinema in a future re-election bid. In a statement, the party executive board wrote, in part, as a party, our job is to support our Democratic candidates. However, we are also here to advocate for our constituents and the ramifications of failing to pass federal legislation that protects their right to vote are too large and far-reaching. The chair of the Arizona Democratic Party defended the censure, noting Arizona Republicans' ongoing efforts to overturn the state's election results. Senator Sinema voted to protect the Senate rule that is not in our Constitution, the filibuster. And while our party is a true coalition, there is room for disagreement on policy. And this issue, we have been consistent and vocal over the last year. As a, ma as a member of the Arizona legislature, I know that because of Republicans, our voting rights are at risk and protecting the franchise is more important than an outdated rule. Senator Sinema's office responded to the vote in a statement, quote, Kirsten has always promised Arizonans she would be an independent voice for the state, not for either political party. She's delivered for Arizonans and has always been honest about where she stands. So, Joe, was it, uh, was it all worth it for Senator Sinema? Well, I mean, that depends. I mean, does she want to impress people in Washington, D.C. and uh, the Upper West Side of Manhattan, or does she want to impress people in Arizona? Uh, Mike Barnacle, uh, a PPP poll out uh, just uh, a couple of days ago in West Virginia shows the two most popular politicians in West Virginia, Donald Trump and Joe Manchin. Uh, and Joe Biden's down in the 20s. Uh, Trump's in the 60s. Manchin's extremely popular. He's popular with Democrats. He's popular with independents. He's popular with Republicans. Uh, and then you go to Arizona, you look at polls comparing Cinema and Kelly. At least the latest polls that I saw showed that Cinema's doing much better in Arizona than Kelly is. Uh, that while Kelly does better with Democrats, uh, Sinema does much better with independents, does much better with Republicans. She's got the old John McCain caucus. So when people start talking about, oh, democracy's broken, these two centrists, these two conservative Democrats are breaking democracy, maybe if you're a blogger uh, in, in Manhattan, maybe if, you know, you're, you're leading the Democratic Party, and I understand the frustrations. I must say personally, I share those frustrations with people who think they should back uh, an exemption, and I've said it for well over a year. But please, this is not uh, undermining democracy. What we're seeing here are two representatives, two senators that came from conservative areas, that came from red states, who are representing those red states. You know, Joe, the interesting thing is, uh I've never had my name on a ballot, nor has Lemire had his name on a ballot. We're commenting on people whose lives are on the ballot, and they know what they're doing. <clears throat> I mean, Senator Sinema, she sometimes sounds illogical or sometimes incomprehensible in the positions that she does take, but her name is on the ballot, and she clearly wants to be reelected. So she's playing her game, and her game has been pretty skillful thus far, both internally in the Senate, although a lot of people don't like what she's doing, it's been pretty skillful. She keeps her name up in the headlines, and she seems to be appealing to the larger constituency in Scottsdale and Yuma and every place else in Arizona, much more so than Senator Kelly, as you just pointed out. But uh, yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting game to watch. Yeah, it's it's called democracy. And uh, Jonathan Lemire, if the Democrats want more progressive senators in West Virginia and want more progressive senators in Arizona, go ahead, primary them and see how that works out for you. They're probably not going to get them. They probably need to start winning other swing states like Florida, uh, uh, Wisconsin and states like that. So they don't have to ever worry about these two uh, votes again.
Yeah, good luck finding a Democrat who's going to beat Joe Manchin in, in West Virginia. He's the only Democrat. Never happened. Uh, he's the only Democrat who win in that state is the, certainly the widely held belief. But you're right, it's other states. And, and that's one of the under overlooked storylines of sort of the trouble that the administration has had trying to get its, its agenda through the Senate is how close the Democrats came to winning a couple other Senate seats and how bad candidates fell apart, like, say, in, for instance, in North Carolina, that if they had put someone better there, they could have added to their margins and therefore not be, uh, at times, almost held hostage uh, by these two senators from West Virginia and Arizona. That's the trick, is trying to increase the margin of your majority. But for now, in this November, it's going to be just trying to keep its majority. And as much as most political observers believe the House of Representatives likely going Republican, the Senate feels like much more of a toss-up. That's where Democrats need to put their energy. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.